Hello Grade 12s and a warm welcome to all of you. At the end of the year, you are required to write an NSC or National Senior Certificate Examination for History. In order to prepare for this examination, it is very important that you know your work and therefore you have to study all the relevant content. However, it is equally important for you to know the skills that we teach you because although the examiner is testing your content knowledge, they are also testing your ability to extract, interpret, analyze, and argue. But don't stress because I will help you to revise these skills so that you are better prepared for your examination. In today's lesson, we're gonna start with history paper one, and we're gonna take a closer look at question one. Now, question one is a source-based section which focuses on understanding the origins of the Cold War. And today we're going to be revising level three limitations questions and how you should go about to answer it. But remember, all of the skills that we are revising in today's lesson will also apply to all of the other topics that we cover in grade 12. OK, so let's start off by briefly taking a look at all of the things that we are going to cover in today's lesson. Firstly, I'm going to give you a very brief outline of the origins of the Cold War and what content you should focus on when preparing for the section. Then, for the rest of the lesson, we are going to revise your source-based skills. Our focus today is going to be to take a look at how the examiner will ask level three limitations questions and how you should go about to answer these questions. Let's start with a brief outline of the origins of the Cold War. When you prepare for the section of work, it is important that you understand that the Cold War was an ideological war between two world powers of the time, America and the Soviet Union, capitalism versus communism. You must know how America and the Soviet Union both attempted to spread their influence in Europe after World War II. This includes things like the Iron Curtain, America's policy of containment, which consisted of the Truman Doctrine and the Marshall Plans, and the Soviet Communist Information Bureau, or Common Form, and the Council for Mutual Economic Assistance, or Comicon. You must also study the Berlin Crisis, the period between 1948 and 1961 in Berlin, with specific focus on the Berlin blockade and the Berlin Wall. Now remember, in accordance to the Grade 12 CAPS document and the examination guidelines, the examiner can focus on any of these aspects when they examine you in your NSC examination at the end of the year. So it is very important that you study all of this content in preparation for that examination. Now that we know the content that we must study, let's focus on the skills that we will be examined on. Remember, the examiner is not only going to test your content knowledge, they are also going to test the skills that we need to study history effectively. Today, the skill that we are going to focus on is level three limitations. Now in your NSC examination, the examiner will examine the skills that you will need as a historian to research history effectively. Remember, history is the study of past events. Historians are the detectives of history, and it is their job to try to reconstruct the truth based on the available evidence. Their task is to collect or extract all the relevant evidence from various primary and secondary sources, they will then interpret this evidence. Once the evidence has been interpreted, they will evaluate its reliability in order to know whether or not it is a credible source of information. Then the historian will evaluate its usefulness as well as the limitations of the evidence in helping them understand the historical event. They will then corroborate the evidence with other sources by focusing on the similarities and differences. Once this is complete, they will use the information they have gathered to write an article, essay, thesis, or a book about the historical event. 
Now, all these skills will be examined in your NSC examination. Each skill will fall within a specific category of questioning. There are three categories. Level one questions will test your ability to extract evidence from various sources. Level two questions will test your ability to interpret evidence from various sources. And level three questions will test your ability to evaluate a source's reliability, usefulness, and limitations, as well as test your ability to compare similarities and differences from various sources. Okay, so let's take a look at level three limitations questions. These are questions that test your skill of evaluating why the information within the source is limited to a historian. When you evaluate the limitations of a source, you must always look at the content in which the source was written, as well as the information within the source. Now, when will the information in a source be limited? It will be limited when the source is biased, because it only gives you information from one perspective. It will also be limited when the source is a form of propaganda because it only gives you either the positive perspective or a negative perspective. Something that you must always remember when answering a level three limitations question is that you always have to explain your answer fully. Marks will not be awarded for a vague response. Now, how do you know when the question you are reading is a level three limitations question? We need to look out for the following words. Comment on the limitations, explain the limitations. So you can see that the word limitations will always be in the question. When you see this word in the question, then you are dealing with a level three limitations question. And you need to look at the context in which the source was written, as well as the information within the source. So now that we know how to identify a level three limitations question, how do we answer it? You look at what information the question is asking you to consider, and then you highlight that part of the question. Then you look at the context of the source and how it gives the information. Your answer will look as follows. You will start the sentence with, the information in the source is limited because, and then you will explain why. Okay, so let's take a look at an example. The question in front of you reads as follows. Explain the limitations of the source to a historian researching the implementation of the Marshall Plan. Now, when you look at this question, what part of this question must we underline which will tell us that this is a level three limitations question. If you said the word limitations, then you are 100% correct. Okay, so now that we know that this is a level three limitations question, we have to answer it. But first, we need to know what the question is asking us to do. So let's read the question again. Explain the limitations of the source to a historian researching the implementation of the Marshall Plan. Now, what do you think this question is asking us to do? The question is asking us to explain why we think the information is limited in us understanding the implementation of the Marshall Plan. In other words, we have to give reasons why the information is limited or explain what makes the information limited. So now that we know what the question is asking us to do, are we ready to answer the question? No, not yet. Why? Because we first have to look at the mark allocation. Okay, so I know that this might sound silly, but 
taking notes of the mark allocation is actually very, very, very important. And the reason is because so many times students throw away unnecessary marks because they don't actually check the mark allocation. And the mark allocation is very important because it actually tells you how many facts you need to include in your answer. So in front of you, we see an example of what a mark allocation in your NSC examination will actually look like. So you can see that the example says 1 times 2 equals 2. And when we look at those numbers, it is important for us to understand what each number actually means. That is going to then help us to understand how much we need to write. Now, the first number, the number one that you see in front of you, that is the most important number for you as the candidate writing the examination, because that number tells you how many facts you have to write. So you can see that that number says one, which means that if this is your mark allocation, you will only need to write one fact. The second number that you see, which is a two, that number tells you how many marks you will get for each fact that you give. So in this case, because it is a two, it means that when you give your one fact as an answer, you are going to get two marks for it. And then the last mark, that just indicates the total amount of marks that you will receive for this question. And you can see that it is two marks. Because for one fact, if you are going to receive two marks for it, your total will be two marks. Now back to our level three limitations question. If we look at the mark allocation, how many facts do we need to include in our answer? If you said two, then you are 100% correct. Why? Because the mark allocation says two times two. Okay, so now we are finally ready to give our answer. But before we do this, we must read through the source to decide what information can help us to answer the question. So let's read through the source together. Okay, so when we're looking at the limitations of a source, then we have to look at two things. We've got to look at the context in which the source is given, as well as how the information is given to us. So when we read the source, the first thing we need to look at is the context that is given with the source. And the context says that this source is a French cartoon that's entitled The American Wall, and it was published on the 4th of October 1947. It depicts the implementation of the Marshall Plan. Now, the fact that this is a French cartoon, France was an ally of America which therefore means that France would have been part of the West. So a French cartoon is automatically going to be pro-Western, and because it's pro-Western, it's favoring the Western perspective of the Marshall Plan. And that would therefore make it limited. Why? Because it's not giving us different perspectives. It's just giving us one perspective then this cartoon will also be limited or the, the information in the cartoon will also be limited because of the context of the cartoon once again the fact that this is a french cartoon which means that it is pro-western which ultimately means that the information is going to be biased and because of that that will make the information limited if we look at the way in which the information is given to us or the information that is given to us, it doesn't really give us much information about the implementation of the Marshall Plan. It gives us a very closed off view about the implementation of the Marshall Plan. And the reason being is because ultimately this is a Western perspective. So we're not seeing it from the Soviet's point of view, we're not seeing anything bad regarding the Marshall Plan. We only see good things regarding the Marshall Plan. And as a result of that, the information would then be limited. So now that we have analyzed the limitations within this cartoon, 
let's look at how we are going to write our answer. So this is what your answer should look like. If you look at all of the points that I've made, I started each sentence with, it is limited because. And remember, previously I said that when you write down your answer, your answer should always start with, the source is limited because, or it is limited because. So let's take a look at what makes the source limited. The first point says it's limited because it's biased towards the Marshall Plan. So you can see that I've highlighted the fact that it's biased, but I've explained the bias. And that's the important thing, because remember, I also said earlier on that your answers need to be explained fully. You can't just vaguely give a reason why the source is limited. So if you're going to say that it's limited because it's biased, you have to explain what the bias is. And the bias is towards the Marshall Plan. In other words, it supports the Marshall Plan. The second point, it's limited because it only gives a Western perspective of the Marshall Plan. The third point, it is limited because it doesn't give detailed information regarding how the Marshall Plan was implemented. Now remember the mark allocation is only two times two. So your answer has to have two pieces of information, not three like mine. I put three pieces of information in my answer so that you can see that there are various different things that you can actually write. But remember, you only need to write down two. OK, so now that we've completed the examples and you know how to identify and answer a level three limitations question, I'm going to ask you to practice to identify and answer it by yourself. So what you need to do is you're going to download the attached activity and then you're going to take a few minutes to complete this activity. Please make sure that you follow all the instructions on the activity very carefully. You're going to pause this video first and then you're going to complete the activity. Once you are done, you're going to unpause this video and then we are going to mark it together. Hello, Grade 12, and welcome back. OK, so you were supposed to complete the activity for me. Now let's mark the activity together. So you received this question. Explain the limitations of this source to a historian researching the Cold War. Now, when we look at this question, what part of the question do we need to highlight, which tells us that this is a level three limitations question? If you said the word limitations, then you are 100% correct. Okay, so now that we have identified this as a level three limitations question, are we ready to answer the question? No, why? Because we first have to understand what the question is asking us to do. So let's read the question together again. Explain the limitations of the source to a historian researching the Cold War. Now, what do you think this question is asking us to do? It's asking us to explain why this source would be limited in our understanding of what the Cold War was. OK, so now that we've identified this as a level three limitations question and we know what the question expects of us, are we finally ready to answer the question? The answer is no. Why? Because we still have to look at the mark allocation. So I want you to look at the mark allocation and then I want you to tell me how many examples must we give in our answer. If you said two, 
then you are 100% correct. Why? Because the mark allocation says 2 times 2. Okay, so now we're finally ready to give our answer. But before we give our answer, we have to look at the source as well as the context. So we've got to first look at the context and then we've got to read through the actual source. And then from that information, we can determine what the limitations of the source is. So let's read through the source together. Let's first take a look at the context of the source. So this, the context reads, in October 1946, at the Paris Peace Conference, the Soviet Foreign Minister Molotov gave the Soviet view of the USA's aim in Eastern Europe. Now that context tells us that this source that we're going to read is a primary source. Why? Because it was created in 1946 during the time of the Cold War. It also then tells us that the person who created it experienced the Cold War. And it also tells us that the person who created it is a Soviet foreign minister, which means that his perspective about America's aim in Eastern Europe is going to be a Soviet perspective. It's going to be biased. OK, so let's look at what his perspective is. So he says, if the USA were to buy up the local industries, take over the more attractive Romanian, Yugoslav and other Eastern European businesses and become master in these small countries, it would in practice mean the economic enslavement of the small countries and their rule by strong, rich foreign firms, banks and industrial companies. Was this what we fought for when we battled against the fascist invaders, the Hitlerites and the Japanese? OK, so when we're looking at his perspective, we can definitely see that he is very anti-US. And, and that is because he is a Soviet foreign minister. So he's going to be anti-US because the Soviets were enemies with America during the Cold War. OK, so I want you to take a few minutes and I want you to look at the evidence in front of you. And then I want you to think about what the limitations of this source is to a historian researching the Cold War. OK, so in front of you, you can see that I've highlighted a couple of points in the source and then I've color coded those points with the answer that I gave. So let's take a look at the two and we compare the two so that you can understand how I interpreted the information to make the argument that the, that information is limited. OK, so let's start with the green. The green I highlighted is a Soviet view, OK? And then you can see under my answer, I said it's limited because it only gives a Soviet perspective of the Cold War tension. It doesn't give a Western perspective at well. So when we take a look at the source, the information is going to be limited to a historian because a historian is only going to get the Soviet perspective. They're not going to get the Western perspective of America's aim in Eastern Europe. So in other words, this source is not America explaining what their aim is in Eastern Europe. It's the Soviets who are their enemy explaining it. And that's why we would consider this source to be limited or the information in the source to be limited to a historian. The second part that I highlighted, the blue part, it says Soviet Foreign Minister Molotov. And then under my answer, I said it's limited because it's a speech by Molotov, 
a Soviet minister during the time of the Cold War, so he will be biased towards the Soviet Union. Okay, so remember that is the biased argument, the fact that the information that, that he's going to be giving us or that he's going to be giving an historian is going to be limited because it's going to be biased. Whatever he's saying is going to be anti-America. It's not going to be pro-America. Why? Because he is a minister of the Soviet Union and the Soviet Union were enemies of America. So that could be a possible second reason that we could give. Then you can see the yellow parts that are highlighted, the economic enslavement of small countries and their rule by strong, rich foreign firms, banks and industrial companies. And then my explanation, I say that it's limited because it only shows how the US was trying to spread their sphere of influence in Europe and not the Soviet Union. So there Molotov is telling us that America is um, trying to spread their influence in Eastern Europe using money. He's talking about dollar imperialism over there. So that then tells us that the information that Molotov is giving us is only telling us about America trying to spread their influence. He isn't talking about how the Soviet Union is trying to spread their influence. And as a result of that, the information that he's giving us will be limited. And then the last part, the part in purple, it says, was this what we fought for when we battled against the fascist invaders, the Hitlerites and the Japanese imperialists? So my explanation to that was it's limited because it only shows how the US caused tension and not how the Soviet Union caused tension during the Cold War. OK, so when we're looking at that specific quote, then we see that there is a lot of tension that's brewing and Ultimately, Molotov is saying that it is America's fault that this tension is brewing. Why? Because he is comparing them to the Nazis. He's comparing them. He's, he's saying ultimately that America is doing exactly what the Nazis did. They are trying to conquer Eastern Europe. OK, and because of that, he's saying that this is causing a lot of tension in Eastern Europe or in Europe as a whole. And this is ultimately what the Cold War tension was all about. So he doesn't talk about how the Soviet Union was also spreading their influence. And because of that, we say that this information is limited because he doesn't give the full picture. He only gives it from a Soviet perspective, which is going to be anti-Western. OK, so let's recap what we've learned so far. Step one. You must look at the words to identify the question as a level three limitations question. Do you remember what these words were? Remember the first one was comment on the limitations and the second one was explain the limitations. You're always going to see the word limitations and when you see that word then you know that this is a level three limitations question and then you have to evaluate the information in the source and look at why it is limited to a historian in their understanding of the event. Then number two, you got to read the question carefully so that you know what the question is asking you to focus on. Number three, you've got to look at the mark allocation very carefully so that you know how much information you must include. Now, a level three limitations question in an NSC final examination paper is always going to be two times two. Then step number four, you're going to look at the context in which the source is written, as well as the information that it represents. And then step number five, you're going to analyze its limitations and then you're going to write down your answer. Great 12s, this is the end of the lesson. Thank you so much for your patience and participation. I really hope that I got to teach you something in this lesson today. 
And remember to continue to practice because practice makes perfect. I hope that you guys all have a lovely day further.